Hey, what's happening gamers? Welcome back to K-Wings Let's Plays and uh, more Fortnite. It's been a while, but uh, the X-Men character Jean Grey, aka the Dark Phoenix, is out. She came out yesterday. There was no way I could look at that because I was playing Epic Mickey at the time. Uh, today's uh, theme is Marvel characters if you have them. And uh, we're just going to have some fun. Then after that is going to be Ultimate Brady's uh, Xenoblade stream and Forza. That's the plan anyway. Ultimate Brady. Um, so, also, it's kind of interesting that they released uh, Jean Grey the day before they made the announcement that uh, X-Men 97 would be uh, coming in 2023. Yep, hopefully it doesn't suck. Um, I'm, but I have heard that the original writers are involved uh, from the show. Uh, the original creators are involved in some capacity. Uh, all the living voice actors will be back. So Storm, Rogue, Jean, uh, Wolverine, Nightcrawler. Uh, you know, um, we don't know about Jubilee yet. But, yeah, pretty much everybody's coming back. Um, unfortunately, Cyclops and Magneto passed away. So they can't be back. But it's still pretty cool. Now, the only thing people are concerned about is if they do... So far, the wording for the show has been continuation and not, like, modern take. Because, unfortunately, most likely, the X-Men show is going to be competing with HBO Max and Cartoon Network's um, Cape Crusader show. But Cape Cru uh, Crusader show, people are concerned about because Bruce Timm says it's going to be a modern update. So that can mean anything. Um, he could be talking about the way the show looks, or he could be talking about the content in the show. A lot of us uh, in the um, BTS community believe that um, that is code for basically, well, you know. Um, so, but um, I have heard back from the X-Men staff, like the X-Men writers, I, I follow them. And they said that they are being heavily consulted and they're going to be adapting storylines um, that they were going to do if they ever had another season. So... It, it doesn't feel like they're going to, you know, go too crazy. Like, this is going to be a show that's aimed toward people that grew up with X-Men, the animated series, set in the 90s. And also, you know, for um, kids. Even though, technically, you could argue that X-Men, the animated series, wasn't really for kids. It was an animated show. It had a lot of stakes in it. It dealt with, like, character deaths and betrayal and all kinds of stuff. Divorce. It was a very cool show. One of my favorite characters was Nightcrawler, but he was hardly in the show. His voice actor announced that he's coming back. So Nightcrawler apparently is going to have a bigger role this season. Or the next season, 2023. And it's going to be a one-year time skip after Charles Xavier went to the Shi'ar Empire. So Charles Xavier won't really be around, which is fine. But we'll have new voices for Magneto and Cyclops. And probably, I believe one actress is not coming back. But Gambit's coming back. Um, Gambit, Wolverine, Nightcrawler, um, Rogue, Storm, and a few others have officially announced that they're back. We're waiting to hear about Colossus, Jubilee, and um, Beast, and a few others if they're going to return. But, what would be cool about this is um, if it truly is a continuation of the show... And they follow the 90s storylines and they don't get overly, you know, 2020 in my 1997 show. Um, we could be looking at uh, television history, like bringing back a TV show like <clears throat> that literally continues in uh, almost two decades right where it left off. That would be unprecedented. But unfortunately, you know, Hollywood and... Animators can't help, but when they do a new season of something, they go super woke. So, we'll see what happens. But, I don't know. After um, actually DMing the creators of the show and hearing, you know, their input, I, I'm pretty hopeful. I think that, you know, if these people really are in charge of it, they're good people. And they, they have a lot of passion, and they brought X-Men to Fox Kids like 20-something years ago. So, we'll see what happens. I don't have high hopes for the Cape Crusader, though. I think it's going to be a train wreck. 
I mean, especially when they were really uh, all the interviews that they've done since then, they really talk about like um, modern update and do things that they couldn't do. So I mean, it's probably going to be a pretty raunchy show every once in a while. Like I don't think it's going to be like a spiritual successor to the animated series at all. I think it's going to be kind of like an R-rated show like Harley Quinn but like not like you know, um too edgy, but pretty dark and, you know, probably murdery. We'll see. We'll see, we'll see, but I've high hopes for the X-Men show. And I uh, I thank the um the people for uh, getting back to me and things like that because I was I was concerned when Disney announced it because anything Disney touches right now it's uh, not necessarily a good thing so if this is one good thing that's happening I'm, I'm pretty excited about it actually so we'll see what happens we won't actually get to see anything for the show until 2023 so that's that's a ways away my car will be paid off by then <laughs> so <laughs> Both the Cape Crusader and X-Men the Animated Series 97 um, will be coming in 2023. I hope X-Men is better. And I hope it sends a message to people that when you bring a show back for the fans, you don't have to go overly woke to try to um, you know, appear, appeal to people. So, let's see what happens. Until then, I have high hopes, so... Um, and I'm, I'm really glad because, I mean, what's really cool about those X-Men, the X-Men team members were so cool, like back in the 90s. They even did everything they could to get X-Men the Animated Series on DVD for fans, like, you know, and then Blu-ray and all this other stuff. They're, they're a really cool group of people. Um, one of the main creators of the show is a husband and wife team, so like Amber, and so instead of being YouTubers, they were... Um, you know, TV people, and they pitched the idea for the X-Men show based on the Jim Lee run, and it got the green light, you know, they, they went through Fox, and it was just, you know, it was like a renaissance of great cartoons and just everything. The storylines that they incorporated, uh, masterful storytellers, you know, just like Batman the Animated Series picked a lot of great, uh, stories from the Bronze Age run of the comics. Um, the X-Men creators picked great stories from the most popular X-Men stories from the 70s, 80s, and early 90s. So if they're really continuing with that format, I think we're in for a real treat. So I think it's pretty cool that they released Jean Grey the day before they made that announcement. Although I'm I'm currently rocking some of Psylocke's stuff because Jean doesn't really have a lot of Phoenix-y stuff in this. So since she is a psychic, I figured she'd be able to use the psychic knife and the psychic butterfly thing. You know, why not, right? It works. Psychic powers. Yay! It is very weird to see her carrying guns and stuff, but whatever. That's something we get over really fast, don't we? It looks like they went with a character model similar to the Poison Ivy look. A little bit. So this is a curvy Jean Grey, which is fine. <clears throat> one thing that I really hope about the X-Men show, one thing we didn't really get to see a lot of, is in the 90s, the X-Men had gotten so big. Like, their team members, you know, had gotten uh, so many people on board, like with the X-Men group, that they had to split leadership between Storm and Cyclops. So Cyclops is the overall leader of the X-Men, but they had to create the gold and the blue team which was part of um, Jim Lee's run, because the X-Men issues, they were packed with characters, right? So, let's say, you know, spitballing, that the new season deals with Magneto, who is replacing Charles Xavier, because Charles is in Space Hospital. If you watch the last episode of X-Men, the animated series, Charles Xavier got some type of terminal illness, and the only cure was in space with the Shi'ar Empire and his love, uh, the queen of the Shi'ar, I forget her name. Um, and she took him and, you know, uh, they did basically the Duke thing at the ep end of the episode, like, because everybody thought Charles was going to die, so everybody was, like, there for his deathbed, and Magneto said, you know, I will work with the X-Men instead of against them, and Cyclops asked Magneto to join, because before, Magneto was just kind of like, you know, I'll, I'll hang out, or I'll be cool with the X-Men, I'll be civil, yo, but I'm not, um... You know, we won't be at war anymore, Charles, so rest easy. And then Cyclops took it a step further, and he's like, Yo, 
Um, why don't you join us, um, Eric? And Magneto's like, what? I mean, I'm, I'm just paraphrasing. They had much cooler dialogue. Um, so. And Magneto uh, ended up joining the X-Men at the end of the series. And Charles went to Space Hospital, and then he contacted the X-Men at the end, and they did basically like this um, dub thing like they did for Duke when Duke was in a coma in G.I. Joe, and they're like, oh, Duke recovered. Yo, Joe! So um, Charles Xavier wasn't on screen anymore, but they had like him telepathically tell the X-Men, by the way, I'm going to survive, but I can never come back. Um, and they're kind of like, oh, it's bittersweet, but at least he's not dead type of thing. And then the show just ends abruptly, you know. So it'd be, it'd be curious to see they do the storyline next um, with the blue and the gold team of X-Men. And if Nightcrawler, if the actor said he's back and doing stuff in the new show, then I really want Nightcrawler to be part of the team. And I want Colossus to be part of the team. And some of the other characters we saw, like Archangel, Iceman, uh, who they had guest roles in the show. And then you can fill out the gold and the blue roster of the X-Men, and it could be like this very big team. Because before, the X-Men was a very small group like throughout the show, and then you'd have popular Uncanny X-Men guest star like Colossus, Nightcrawler, Psylocke, stuff like that. But they'd only be in like one episode out of like tons of episodes. But it's still probably uh, one of the best uh, X-Men um, media ever. I like X-Men the Animated Series better than the... Fox X-Men movies with Hugh Jackman. Um, and X-Men Evolution is really good. So, um, because everybody was talking about X-Men the Animated Series today, like, they're pressuring Disney now to bring back X-Men Evolution. Who knows? Maybe it'll happen. X-Men Evolution wasn't bad, but it was still no X-Men the Animated Series. It was fun. And it was very, like, 2000s. Um, I, I think what was great about a lot of the different X-Men cartoons that have come out over the years is that they feel uh, perfect for the era that they released in. Um, X-Men 97, or X-Men the Animated Series, like the 90s show, was a 90s show. Uh, it had 90s themes, 90s problems, uh, 90s fashion, uh, 90s storytelling, you know. And uh, X-Men Evolution was a show very much set, like, after 9-11. Um, so, you know, the, the way that characters interacted and the fashion and the attitude was very reminiscent to, you know, world post 9-11, um, you know, like within a year or two after the events. Um, and it was, it was a cool show. I liked it, but I always liked, uh, X-Men the Animated Series a lot more. At least I think it came out. It either came out in 2000 or 2001. I don't remember. It was a cool show, though. And then they had uh, another show, X-Men uh, Wolverine. Like, the X-Men moved to Nickelodeon, I believe, and Wolverine was the leader of the X-Men. And that was, like, a show more geared toward, like, people who grew up with X-Men Evolution or X-Men the Animated Series, and they were, like, in their 20s or something like that. And the storylines were pretty intense. And they brought in Emma Frost as a member of the X-Men. Um, what I don't want them to do with X-Men 97 is to bring uh, characters that never appeared in the show. Because we've seen guests of Iceman, Nightcrawler, Colossus that had open invitations to become members of the X-Men. And due to the, the show's budget, um, they were like, no, we can't do that. But now that they're on a bigger network like Disney+, Plus, I mean, Disney should throw whatever money they want at these creators to make an amazing next season. Like, make a bigger character roster, have a better animation, because the animation budget was going in the last season of X-Men. You can tell. If you go back and you watch the X-Men 90s show, the very last season, the animation style changed. And, like, it wasn't as detailed anymore. Like, they were running out of um, the budget. Like, they weren't, you know, they had to make cutbacks. So the animation got sloppy in the last season. And the last season only consisted of 10 episodes, I think. It was it was a very short season. Um, a lot of people weren't really watching X-Men anymore because uh, Power Rangers was, like, really big by, like, 96, I believe it was, is when X-Men went off the air. Beetleborgs was on, uh, Power Rangers, Turbo, and some other stuff. Or maybe Zeo was killing it. I don't remember. It was one or the other, but I, I do remember seeing the last couple episodes of uh, the X-Men cartoon, and 
I didn't like the new animation style that they were doing. You know what it felt like? Uh, there was a Spider-Man show that they gambled with in 99 or something like that uh, that came out around the end of the X-Men series. And uh, Spider-Man was going into space and working with people. And he had like this really weird costume. Um, Spider-Man Unlimited, I think, was the name of the show. That was kind of the art style that they incorporated into... Uh, into that, and I, I never liked that art style for the the final season of X Men because it, it just it looked weird. The colors were very washed, and um, it looked like it was made on a computer, but like a computer that didn't really like do very good with the details. And a, a lot of Fox cartoon shows started using that style of animation because of like it was cheaper. It's cheaper than doing cell 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 work. You know, frame by frame, whatever. But, like, in the early days, um, up until shows like Batman Beyond and stuff, cartoons started to look really stupid from, like, 96 until uh, about 98, 99. And then, you know, they they got better better stuff. Even um, G.I. Joe Extreme used that same kind of washed, uh, weird color situation, too. Like, early computer um, stuff. Not like 3D, but like, it was 2D, but painted weird. Hey, 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 don't do that with my tissues, yo. What is your deal, Zelda? You've been fed, like, so many times. And you're still misbehaving, yo. What up, Gene Squad? Um, I have some homework for you guys, though. Um, I would love to do and honor the X-Men... Like, announcement, I would love to do some X-Men shorts. If you know of any funny things that we've done with the various X-Men games that we've covered on the channel or the other channel, uh, let me know the time codes, and I will, um, by Monday, I will have uh, a few X-Men shorts ready for next week. Um, series that we've done is Marvel Ultimate Alliance 1 and 2, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, um, we did the X-Men arcade game, so welcome to die, and we've done, um, some other X-Men stuff. Zelda might need to go in the basement, I don't know. She was attacking your ramen bowls or something. Zelda's been fed three times, yeah. So what do you guys... She's licking you! She's like, you taste like... Pork chop. Zelda's gonna eat Amber! Run! She is adorable. Yeah, what Amber said. Thank you for becoming a member on uh, uh, Twitch. We'll get the information for you as soon as we can. Uh, you now have... I, I'd love for you to take her upstairs, honey, but she won't stay. She won't stay. I feel like the reason why they announced Jean Grey yesterday is because they knew they were going to do this X-Men announcement early in the morning. And people aren't even talking about the X-Men MCU movie because they're worried about how it'll go after the Eternals. I'm gonna try to be up for Amber's going to try to be up for the Xenoblade thing. But what do you think? Do you guys honestly believe that um, it's possible to, to bring back a, a popular show um, and continue it without um, basically ruining it with modern stuff. Do you think that's they're just trying to trick people? And be like, oh no, it's it's going to be okay? Kind of like how Kevin Smith said that He-Man would be a continuation of He-Man, and it really wasn't. It was like a, a mess. Um, do you think that they're, they're lying to people to try to get people to believe that the show is going to be good? 
Or do you think it's going to be like a disaster like they did with uh, the Eternals? I'm curious to know what you guys think. Yeah, Young Justice continuation was actually pretty good, but they they did go a little bit... Uh, well, no, they've been pretty tame. They haven't been too bad with... Like, I, I would say that um, the best example of Young Justice's comeback when they, you know, made it a little bit more violent and they added some more social themes to it, they did it tastefully. It wasn't, like, overly done. Like... They're a good example of how to do a continuation of a show right. Um, but you have to remember that the X-Men 90 show was set in a time where the X-Men were dealing with different stuff. So it wasn't the political climate of 2020, 2021, the 2020s. It was what was going on in the mid-90s um, for the X-Men in their world. So to, to spur on things that didn't exist would be out of touch and just not not a continuation of the show it would it would feel very awkward and weird and also because they brought back the original writers of the show that gives me um a lot of relief because it's kind of like okay we're going to continue with the good x-men storylines and they're not going to adapt the terrible x-men comics that marvel's been putting out for the past 10 years so i i don't know i for the first time in a long time i actually feel like besides Young Justice, that a company is actually going to do justice to a revival of a popular show. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm excited. Part of me is a little worried, but part of me feels a little bit better knowing that the creators of the original show are involved, and the writers, and the voice actors. I think lightning might strike again. And I hope so. Because you know what they say, they say lightning never strikes the same place twice, but in this case I hope it does, because X-Men the Animated Series was a great show. You can watch the whole thing on Disney Plus currently. The last season is weird, I will be completely honest with you. It, it feels like um, the storylines get a little weird because they're, they're starting to do a lot of 90s storylines of the X-Men, so they're, they're moving away from the more popular 80s storylines, which is when X-Men was at its peak. So, um, but still, the X-Men animated series' worst season is still better than a majority of the cartoon shows that have existed the past 20 years. Even in its worst, it's still better. So, like I said, I have high hopes. And I think that this was a marketing thing that they did, having Jean Grey the day before this monumental announcement. In fact, her costume that she's wearing... It's very, very similar to her um, Dark Phoenix costume in the animated series. The only difference is it was like it was like a darker red instead of a lighter red. Yeah, um, Star Wars: The Clone Wars did decently when they brought it back. It's possible as long as you get the team involved and you let them do whatever they want. Um, then I believe that you can resurrect a show. And still make it great. But if you replace the writers and, you know, you do some other stuff, then it's not going to be the same show. So the fact that most of the original team is involved is a good thing. Makes me happy. Because most of these people aren't really currently working on any animated shows or anything like that. You know, some of them are retired. So that means they're, they're still fresh in that mindset from the 90s. You know, so I think they can deliver a good product. It's not like they went back and they started writing Marvel Comics again when Marvel Comics kind of, you know, jumped off the cliff with their weird ideologies and other things. These are literally guys who haven't really worked in television in 20 years. And they've just kind of been going to um, fan conventions, meeting fans of X-Men the Animated Series for, oh, I don't know, probably about 10 years now. Uh, they kind of work restoring a, a bunch of old um, cartoons to DVD. And uh, there are a lot of the original team is involved with uh, X-Men 97. So, I don't know. I, I just I feel a lot better about this. I didn't feel good about it when I saw the announcement. But when I reached out to people that are involved with the original show, I felt better about it. I was like, oh my gosh, really? This person's involved? This person's involved? Holy crap. That's awesome. 
Because, I mean, that, that doesn't usually happen. So Disney is actually pretty smart. Either that or they're in full damage control trying to restore the Marvel brand because of um, the Eternals. But honestly, I believe that the Eternals could flop because Spider-Man is going to be their biggest movie of, like, since Endgame. Like, since Infinity War and Endgame, the Spider-Man movie is going to be massive. So Eternals can flop, the Miss America movie, and whatever else. Um, it doesn't matter. Like, you can't stop the Marvel machine. Hopefully, it's a big if, but I know Hollywood is, you know, not really all that smart. But it's possible that they could learn from their mistakes with Eternals and some of the stuff that they pushed that got them blocked in most of the countries in the world. That they had to edit things out of the movie. Um, but usually a company would learn from its mistakes and be like, okay, this didn't test well with the audience, we're not going to push that. But they're still trying to push a lot of stuff the audience doesn't want. Um, but by doing this announcement to the X-Men 97, either this is a distraction from what's going to be happening with the MCU movies, or they're trying to course correct and, you know, tell Marvel fans, we can actually do what people want. Here's X-Men the Animated Series back for, I don't know, sixth or seventh season. And we're bringing back the original team, the original voice actors. All these people have been retired, and we're bringing them all back. I think that's awesome. Um, but it could also be, like, uh, a thing that they're trying to distract people from things, or, you know, like, consume this product while we release this movie that probably won't be as good, but we want you to see this too, because remember when we did that thing for you about X-Men the Animated Series? Yeah, so go see Eternals 2 or something. But anyway, I think like a marketer, so. But I, I still think this is a really nice thing that they did with the fans. I was super happy when Young, Young Justice came back. And I really enjoyed uh, a lot of the stuff that they were able to continue. Because it felt like um, you literally returned to where they left off. I mean, they had to do a time skip because the technology had changed a bit since the show went off the air. But for the most part, other than, like, um, adding some more adult el elements to the show and modernizing it just a little bit, it still <coughs> felt like, um, you know, it still felt like Young Justice. So, with today's technology, it it's very easy for them to recreate the art style that was used in the 90s. It would look a little bit different. Like, you know when they brought the uh, Ninja Turtles back um, as a guest character? in one of the Ninja Turtle shows. Like, they had the 80s Ninja Turtles back, but they couldn't quite use the original art style because the original art style was hand-drawn, and the, the new art style was done on the computer. It was still the same character models, like the same look of the Ninja Turtles from the 80s, but you could tell looking at it that, okay, this is a computer, whereas before, when I was a kid, it was all hand-drawn, cell by cell, you know, with animation and stuff like that. So... Um, I have a feeling that uh, X-Men 97 is going to kind of have that vibe to it where it will look similar to the 90s show, but it can't really look exactly like it because everything is going to be done on the computer. So it'll have like that, um, you know, computer vibe and not so much, okay, this was literally a, 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 a passion project that was done by hand. Um, back in the day, in uh, Jim Lee's art style, more or less. Yeah. But uh, I'm, I'm excited. So I hope you guys are excited too, because I think it's going to be good. I think fans are going to be happy. Well, some fans will be happy. Twitter will probably freak out if they don't modernize the show. Like, uh, you'd never hear the end of it from Twitter. But... Um, Twitter wanted a lot of stuff added to the Eternals, which they did, and the Eternals bombed. So, maybe companies should stop listening to Tumblr and Twitter because they're morons. Um, there's no reason that the Eternals movie should have failed the way it did, but they just kept throwing everything in the kitchen sink into the movie. And that's the truth. They had ten characters in it. They had every modern theme you could think of, I think, except for maybe like one or two. Um... And it just, I don't know. It was like uh, the Justice League movie, from what a friend explained to me, but like watching paint dry and the characters are just so uh, one-dimensional 
and bland and boring. And the movie just drags on and on and on. And then the end, when one character just like basically game overs himself by flying off into something, you know, that's the only time my friend who's a, a critic in Philly um, felt that the movie got anything of interest to watch. Like he fell asleep numerous times uh, when he had his uh, special screening. In fact, a couple people in the theater that were press fell asleep because the movie was just so boring. And he actually wrote a scathing review uh, for Justice League, like saying how bland and boring the film was. But he said he would watch Justice League again, Whedon's version, over Eternals any day of the week. Even though he hated Justice League, he hates Eternals more than Justice League, like Whedon's version. He loved the Snyder Cut. But I thought that was kind of funny. Um, let's see, what else we got coming out? So the Hawkeye thing is coming out soon. That should be pretty interesting. Um, that's gonna be around Christmas time, though, I think. I'm probably gonna watch it because I like, uh, the actor who plays Clint is pretty cool. So, I think that'll be fun. And then the, the Book of Boba is Star Wars, though, so I don't really... I don't really know the, uh, any other Marvel stuff that's happening, except for, um, what is it? Um, She-Hulk should be starting up in January or something, right? Or is it this year? Do I like Street Fighter? Yes, I like Street Fighter. I don't know what Street Fighter has to do with Marvel, but... Yes, I like Street Fighter. I've been a Street Fighter fan for a very long time. Years and years and years. Mm -hmm. The power of the Phoenix! Not really. Your friend fell asleep halfway through the Eternals? Yeah. It was pretty bad. What I find funny, too, I'm not... Uh, I mean, they said that it was like... Um, you know, dislike bombed or whatever, review bombed, but have you noticed that, like, the day after the theater came out or whatever, um, that it released, you had exactly 2,500 fan reviews that pushed the video to, like, a fan uh, positive on Rotten Tomatoes to, like, 80 plus or something like that, and really since then, there's been no other additional reviews added positive. It still says around 2,500. And so um, they can call out people for negative review bombing, but they won't call out people for positive review bombing when essentially it's the same thing. But, you know. Yeah, everybody I talked to hated the movie. Um, it made them... One, one person, uh, like a New York critic friend of mine, was like... This just just proof that, you know, after Avengers Endgame that the MCU is just dead. Like he said the last um, MCU movie that he's interested in is two. Spider-Man, um, you know, No Way Home and Doctor Strange in the uh, Multiverse, Doctor Strange 2. After that, he really doesn't want to watch MCU movies anymore. He thinks that um, superhero movies are on the way out and that sci-fi is going to make a comeback or adventure movies like he believes that Tom Holland's um, Uncharted movie is going to set the bar for adventure films again, like in the 80s. And you're going to see like a resurgence of more adventure, action-adventure movies, which was um, abundant in the 90s and 80s. There were so many action-adventure movies. Just like, you know, for the past 10, 12 years, there's been so many superhero movies. We had so many adventure films. And that ran from like... Mm, about a decade, like uh, the late 80s until about The Mummy, so like 1999. And then they just kind of got stale and uh, you had some other movies. that Everything travels in fads, you know. Um, but I will say this. If uh, the MCU did not take all the risks that they took with the Eternals and they just like stuck to kind of Jack Kirby's model... Uh, for the Eternals, I think that Marvel could have had a, a major hit. 
But the thing is, they completely abandoned everything that made the Eternals the Eternals. They changed characters, they race swapped, they, you know, gender swapped. They did all kinds of stuff that was not Jack Kirby's uh, vision, and nor was uh, his storytelling involved at all. If Jack Kirby was around, he would have, like, hated the movie. Like, everybody thinks that he would have been okay with it. No. Um, the, the true, um, I guess you would say, the true respect respect to uh, Kirby's work, believe it or not, was Darkseid in um, the Snyder Cut. Like, that is an homage and respect to Kirby's characters. Because he created both Darkseid, the New Gods, and the Eternals. So he was going back and forth between DC and Marvel. So with, uh, with Marvel, he essentially created, like, um, a DC equivalent to those characters with the Eternals. That's why, you know, they act like Superman, Wonder Woman, The Flash... Things like that. Um, they, they're they based on those DC templates. And then the New Gods was before um, the Eternals. And they're a completely different uh, aspect. Which, it would be cool to get a New Gods movie. But I don't see that happening for a while. Like, I don't know. Um, maybe when Discovery has full control of uh, DC or something. That we'll finally get a New Gods movie. Which is weird. I mean, I'm, I'm just throwing it out here. DC says that they're all for diversity and stuff, right? But uh, did you know that the New Gods movie was actually... First, it was being handled by an African-American guy who was an up-and-coming director who had an amazing script that would fall in line to Zack Snyder's stuff. Uh, Porter was going to be involved. Or the Dark Side actor was going to play Dark Side. Um, it was going to connect to Snyder's vision of his universe. And uh, it was going to be really cool. And then DC was like, nope, we're going to give you the boot. And then we're going to bring in a woman of color to be the, the director and writer. And her vision was okay, but it was completely different than um, what Zack Snyder's universe was establishing. And then DC fired her and just completely got rid of the Eternals thing. Or not the Eternals, sorry. Got rid of the New Gods movie. Um, she also recast Darkseid, which was weird because the guy who plays Darkseid is phenomenal. Um... But we don't know what's happening with uh, the New Gods movie now. Maybe DC will greenlight it because Eternals bombed and, you know, they can do Kirby's work like Justice. But I don't think anybody's going to touch the New Gods or the Eternals for a long time. The next thing that you'll see in the Eternals universe would be the Black Knight character who was introduced uh, in the Eternals movie. Who's actually a really cool character. He's basically like a King Arthur-like guy. He has like an Excalibur sword. Um, so he'll show up in the MCU or probably if, if I would be guessing I don't think he's going to get a movie I think that he's going to get like some type of um, live action series to flesh out his character and do some flashbacks of you know who he is and stuff like that uh, he also appeared in the Lego game the Black Knight the Marvel Lego game which we will be playing the uh, Lego Marvel game uh, this month for the Switch like, as soon as Epic Mickey wraps up, or, um, you know, we're going to be doing that and the Pokemon game around the same time. So you have two fun series, Pokemon starting up next week, and Lego Marvel for Switch, which we weren't able to do in October. So you'll get to see a lot more of these um, characters. I, I believe the Black Knight is in Lego Marvel. He's just a, you know, he's a guy, he has a... Um, Mm, kind of like a black knight armor, red cape, and essentially a sword that's basically like a, a, um, Excalibur, but it has a different name. Uh, e Ebony or Ebony, one something, something um, starts with an E, and it's a special sword that they introduced, I believe, in the Eternals movie. They teased it or something like that. It's essentially Excalibur, though, but it, they have a different name for it for copyright reasons. And he's going to be the the only thing that survives. Him and Cersei will be the only characters that, and maybe Icarus, that will show up in other parts of the MCU. But I don't I don't think they're going to get a uh, a second movie. What they should have done, um, which probably would have been smarter, is uh, they should have made the Eternals like a, um, uh, well. For one, they should have been more respectful to Jack Kirby's uh, vision. 
And two, they should have made it like a um, H or sorry, Disney Plus uh, series. That way they could have fleshed out the characters and stuff like that. Marvel got a little bit too big in the head thinking that they could essentially make a Justice League movie and introduce ten times more of the characters than Justice League did and have the movie succeed. So, I mean, because they were like, well, you know, we, we did Endgame and we did Infinity War, uh, so we can easily do this for the Eternals. No. For one, the Eternals aren't that popular. That'd be like DC making a movie on the, uh, the Challengers of the Unknown. <laughs> it wouldn't work. <clears throat> you have to build up that uh, those characters and establish them, which is something DC has finally learned their mistakes with. But, um, you know, it's a bit too late for that. Just my two cents, you know, coming from a DC Batman guy. But uh, I don't think Eternals would have bombed, even with all the stuff they had in it, if they would have made it like a, a Disney Plus series from the get-go. Because then they could have spent more time on it. And then people might actually have been invested in these rigid, wooden characters. Um, but nope. <clears throat> uh, come on, people, ready up. I want to get some more Jean Grey action. Genie. Genie, genie, genie. And then I have a stream after this. I am doing the 22nd episode of... Oh, we got some Starfire? Wait, no, there's no Starfire. Who is that? Is that Gene? Oh, that is Gene. It kind of looked like Starfire for a second. I need you guys to ready up or I'll have to kick you. Not ready. Tony Stark's not ready. Because I can't get into the next match. You're not ready. Batman who laughs. Or is that Groot? Yeah, so I need you guys to ready up, if at all possible. And then we can get into the, the next match, because I, I can only do this for a little bit, and then I have to get to um, my next stream. Because I've, I've got um, this stream, and then I've got Forza. So I, I have to be more more timely. So if I don't if I don't see you ready, I'm going to have to kick you. Like, I'm, I'm going to start the countdown, so uh, you got to ready up now. You can hear me saying ready up. And if you're not, I'm going to have to kick you. Try something else. Try to get some other people. So you guys down here have 30 seconds. 30 seconds to ready up. <clears throat> nah, Disney's not going to be buying. Um, Discovery's buying uh, Warner Media. Okay, so you're ready. Good. You're ready. Good. You're not. You're not. So 15 seconds. <laughs> 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, that's it. So, anybody not ready, I'm kicking. Okay, you're done. No offense. That should do it. <clears throat> or not. There's still more people not ready now. That's the only thing I don't like about Fortnite, is it takes so long to get into matches. Like, uh, some of the other online games we look at, it's like, boom, boom. You know, you get in, you get in, get out. And then when you come back here, it takes at least, sometimes up to 30 minutes just to get into another match. You know? <laughs> uh, DC and Marvel could do a crossover. Maybe someday, but uh, DC doesn't really have... An established um, we still don't know who's gonna be the the main Superman you know is it gonna be Valzad is it gonna be Calvin Alves who is it you know 
they have all the stuff they could do with Henry Cavill, but they want him gone. Like, Warner Media just doesn't want to work with him. Um, Henry Cavill wants to make more Superman movies for the fans, but, you know, Warner Brothers has the potential to make money. But they don't care about money. They care about woke points. Same with DC. They're not making money. They're, you know, appealing to activists. They're not appealing to fans. That's why they're in financial straits. Um, same thing with Warner Media. Warner Media had the ability to make a lot of really cool stuff. They chose to listen to the belly aching from uh, people on Twitter and Tumblr and Facebook and, you know, basically tell the fans, you know, you don't, we're not going to give you this stuff. I was going to say something else, but I can't say it. It'd be too, too colorful for this channel. Um, they don't, they don't know how to really utilize their products like Warner Media doesn't. Discovery will, but Discovery is going to have a lot to clean up. But the good news, uh, as of yet, there is still no confirmation about what's going on with Kyoto's Superman. And he, only, he has until December, it's either the 15th or the 5th, to release his script to Warner Media so they can greenlight the movie. Because the movie's only in talks, and there's still no script. There's no script, there's no cast, there's no nothing. Meanwhile, Henry Cavill, for his Man of Steel thing, he has a plot. He has, like, a, a timetable when he can have the movie ready by. Um, he has a director in mind. The The other Superman project that's not Michael B. Jordan, they just announced it and then haven't said anything. Thankfully, that writer is super lazy, so he'll probably miss the deadline. And uh, they only have a little while. Like, they can't do it past December because the agreement is until December. Like, they have to turn something in and pitch it. So there might be hope that that will get canceled, which is good because I don't want anti-9-11 guy making a Superman movie, especially a modern Superman movie is what he said. So you know what that's going to be about. That'll be a very toxic, mean, angry, uh, not a very good Superman film. Whereas we could actually get a continuation of what Henry Cavill was doing um, and the things that he wanted to do, which was, I believe he said Jonathan Kent. Like Super Baby and War World and some other stuff. Basically, think about like what Brian Singer had in mind for his Superman movie, like his sequel with like Brainiac and stuff like that. But uh, Henry Cavill has some more plans that would be interesting to see because one of the things that we really didn't get to see with Superman is uh, for him to fight opponents that were, you know, not really one dimensional. Um, Zod was just kind of annoying, and then he was Quasimodo Doomsday. You know, super powerful, knocking Superman around, whatever, but uh, it didn't really challenge Superman the way that his villains do in the comic books. And Lex Luthor was just like this annoying clown. So if you could bring in an interesting character like Mongol, you know, you kind of open up the doors for bringing in Green Lantern and all kinds of stuff that they could do with that, or Brainiac. You know, maybe you could have some Justice League people show up or whatever. But, you know, the the rumor with the, the whole Flash thing, which has some people kind of hesitant to be on board with the Flash thing. I know, talking about DC with um, Marvel stuff. Is they're saying, supposedly, that they're going to introduce a brand new Justice League in the Flash movie that's going to replace the, the main cast. Like Gal Gadot, Henry Cavill... Ben Affleck, all this stuff. Like, all those uh, actors will be replaced. And they'll introduce new versions of Batman, Wonder Woman, Superman, and some other stuff. At least that's the rumor. Like, um, Flash will still stay because Flash is responsible for Flashpoint. So, if you didn't know, like, in the pre-52, it starts with um, Batman, Superman, and all these other characters the way you know them. And then what happens after that is they all end up being kind of like erased by Flash's hijinks traveling through time. So what they would do is then he would be introduced to a new Justice League that is on that timeline or that Earth or whatever and get rid of the other people. At least that's a rumor because they're saying that um, apparently somebody on set uh, said that Brazilian Wonder Woman is in the movie, supposedly. 
Um, I don't remember her name. I just know that she's the Brazilian Wonder Woman. She was introduced in DC Future State. Very popular character from Future State. Probably one of the most popular versions of uh, Wonder Woman, like for the new generation. She's a cool character. I don't have any issue with her. Um, so she would make her debut. Like um, Supergirl, which they are saying it is Kara, but they gave it, instead of it being Lara, um, Superman's daughter or cousin, it's definitely, it's Kara. Um, it might even be the Kara that was introduced in the uh, Man of Steel books um, that were connected to Henry Cavill's Superman. We don't know yet. Like, they're still just calling her Supergirl, but apparently it was leaked that she is Kara. Or a version of Kara. So she would basically replace her cousin uh, after Flash's time travel. So it would be uh, Brazilian Wonder Woman. It would be uh, Kara. Then it would be a version of Ezra Miller. Like a version of him. Most likely it's going to be uh, the Flash that wears a weird Keaton like spray painted Flash costume. Like they're saying that might be the new Flash. Like the guy with the really long hair or whatever. And then um, uh, possibly Blue Beetle would be the next version or something. So they want to introduce a new Justice League. That way they can kind of be like, aha, this is new and different. We have, uh, you know, characters that meet certain check marks and uh, people asking, oh, what, what happened to those other characters? Well, those other characters got erased because of the Speed Force. So they can't really come back. But don't worry. Uh, the Justice League is still going to continue in another movie, and they'll fight Doomsday, but it's going to be somebody else. So, that's the rumor. And, I mean, it makes sense. If, if DC is going to fix their uh, cinematic universe, I guess they kind of have to do, essentially, the Flashpoint thing where they erase the current continuity because of, you know, the Speed Force. And then... Uh, bring in new characters but then I'm worried about just like what they did with the Weed and Justice League where they introduced so many characters which should have been two movies into one um, the audience didn't really feel for a lot of these characters and also the audience really knows Ben Affleck and Henry Cavill and all these other people as um, Batman Superman and Wonder Woman so they might not be cool seeing like cameos of these characters and then outright replacing them for future movies but Gal Gadot is trying to segue her way out of the role anyway. Um, she only has one movie left, and that's Wonder Woman 3. And nobody knows what's happened with Henry. Henry wants to be Superman. He did an interview, and then The Rock uh, said something about having him. That dude had a marker on his head. It looked like it. That was weird. It looked like he had an arrow on his head. Okay. Okay. I mean, it was a yellow arrow, but still looked like an arrow was on his head. Eh. But a lot of people are saying that Henry shouldn't have done the interview he did because it screams desperation. I think that what he was doing was nice, but, you know. Because, uh, I mean, people are saying, well, it's because he doesn't have anything uh, coming up. It's like, he has a lot of movies coming up. He's going to be the Highlander, and he's possibly going to be Bond. He's also in the running to play He-Man. He's got a lot of stuff going for him. He doesn't necessarily have to be Superman. He wants to be Superman because it's his favorite character. Think about that. You got to play your favorite character, and everybody on the internet, or everybody on Twitter, where a lot of people on Twitter are jerks, um, are telling him, you know, he needs to retire and give his role to a person of color because it's the right thing to do. And it's just like, what are you even talking about? It's like, Henry Cavill is a Superman fan. He wants... When he's done with the role, then he'll, you know, uh, happily hand over the role. But he has more he wants to tell the character. You know? It's not like the Ben Affleck situation where he's like, Yeah, I don't really care and I don't want... I don't really see any other stuff about this because we're not going to do my movie. Like, he still sees himself as like... There's so much more potential to his character's story. It's not like he's just like, you know... Things aren't going well with me in the studio. We're done. I still want to play the character. I have ideas and things that I know that um, people will like. That's that's a completely different mindset. You don't replace somebody with a fan base that's that huge right now uh, that can actually put 
uh, butts and seats with super edgy uh, movies because that's what The Eternals was. The Eternals was this really edgy movie that was in your face, you know, Hollywood stuff. Uh, basically Hollywood propaganda. And um, it failed. So if you do that same thing with the Superman movie, it also will fail because that's not what the audience wants right now. The audience wants a cool superhero story. And Hollywood's like, nah, we want to do this and this, and if you don't watch it, then there's a problem with you. It's like, that that type of mindset, thankfully, isn't going to work much longer because they're not going to make money, which is awesome. That needed to happen. Like, Eternals needed to fail for other movies to kind of, like, move away from certain elements and just focus on the stuff that the audience want. Because... In reality, if they did that, they could actually continue the superhero fad another 10 years. But if they go the route that they did with Eternals, then the superhero movies are going to dry up real fast. They won't work. Because the audience isn't going to want to watch that. That's just reality. They easily, easily could keep milking this thing, but they don't want to. They want their cake and they want to eat it too. And it's not going to work that way. I thought it was going to work that way. I didn't think Marvel would have any movies that would flop. Not at all. I was wrong. I was like, wow, there are actually decent people in the world that don't want to support, like, stuff that's bad. It's like, wow. I thought, you know, basically people would consume whatever Marvel told them to consume. But nope. People were like, nah, I don't want to see this movie. It's stupid. And I was like, good for you, audience. That's how you get real change in movies, is you have to basically, uh, you know, be like, nope, not doing this. Not getting my money. Whoa. Wow, Jean Grey's on fire. I think I just got three kills in a row. Nice. That doesn't happen very often, by the way. I just kind of run around and talk about stuff, and sometimes we win, sometimes we don't. Most of the times, my team doesn't win, because I'm the weakest link on my team. I know it. I embrace it. It's fine. Uh, I do love uh, showing off the characters, though, and I think Jean Grey looks pretty cool. I love that they used her uh, costume for the Dark Phoenix. I always like the Dark Phoenix more than her um, her Phoenix costume that's kind of like green and yellow. The red and the yellow looks really cool. But I actually thought when they were going to put Jean Grey in this... Because I said they were going to put Jean Grey in this last year. I was like, they're going to bring Jean. Um, but I thought they were going to do like her 90s Jim Lee costume. Because that's kind of like what a lot of people outside of the Phoenix associate Jean Grey's attire. So it was cool to see. Oh, they're going to do Dark Phoenix. Okay. That's a popular uh, version of Jean. And it's the 90s one. Or 80s one. Yeah, that's her 80s attire. That's the one that showed up in the X-Men animated series. I love what they did with uh, the Phoenix in the X-Men animated series. I thought that was really cool. The only thing that I want to see change with Jean, though, in X-Men the animated series is... Um, what bothered me about the show every once in a while with Jean's character, she was always grabbing her head and screaming because she was, like, in psychic agony. I hope they kind of drop that arc and with, like, Professor Xavier no longer around... Like, that she's a very powerful psychic without the powers of the Phoenix. I, I want to see Jean with more character development instead of this person that's like, Ah, oh, I basically have a headache and my mental powers are hurting me. And her going, Scott! Scott! All the time. I, I want I want Jean to uh, be the most powerful psychic on Earth now that Charles is in space hospital. And for her to, you know, stop grabbing her head like she has a migraine. Um, when she's using her powers or something like that. That would be nice. Do you see people need uh, people like Kevin Feige? Kevin Feige lost his way. Um, Kevin Feige was super adamant about the Eternals being the way it was. Uh, I think the people who made the Spider-Man movie could do a good job. Like, if they found people who were like uh, the Spider-Man team and uh, the director of Thor Ragnarok... And uh, James Gunn is already technically going to do another DC movie, so. But Feige is Feige's going too far on the other side. Feige had a clear vision and knew what he was doing. 
but he's kind of steering the car off the cliff now. Because if Eternals is the start of what these other projects that he's been really pushing for the same stuff he did in Eternals, those projects will fail too. Because people don't want that right now. It's, they're not ready for it. Audiences said, you know, no. And the rest of the world said no. China banned the movie. The Middle East banned the movie. Until they edited out aspects of the film. Which Disney didn't want to do. But they did anyway because they were losing money. <clears throat> you have to give your audience what they want. Or you're not going to make money. It's just simple. Uh, even Disney, they I mean, they have money to burn. But there's got to be... A type of compromise between the audience and the filmmakers if there isn't then why does the audience what are they gonna go support you can't just like consume something because you have a love for uh, the brands of movies if one of the movies is bad you have to go like basically boycott it or you know um, otherwise nothing will change like they'll keep releasing you want them to release the quality products that they did with Marvel before the Eternals. You don't want the stuff after the Eternals to be like the Eternals. The way they did the story, the way they did the characters, um, didn't work. So they need to veer away from that and go back to what made them successful. And they probably could do it, but I don't think they're going to do it. Hollywood doesn't really learn from their mistakes. DC didn't learn from their mistakes when they made a bad movie after a bad movie. They had several bad movies happen and then a couple good ones. And now, you know, things have kind of changed for them a little bit, at least from what we've seen. Uh, the Suicide Squad movie was better, but it wasn't better received. Like, audiences, even though it was praised, mm, audience haven't really gone to support it the way that they did for some of the other films. Because they still are in the mindset that, okay, DC doesn't really release movies that I'm interested in. So they didn't really go and, you know... And now, because of the flop with the Eternals, um, which is going to get crushed by Ghostbusters in a few days. Unless, did Ghostbusters come out today or is it next week? It's soon. I know Ghostbusters is soon. And even a formal Marvel actor, uh, Hugh Jackman, has had nothing but praise to say about Ghostbusters. I think he's trying to get himself in the next Ghostbusters movie, personally. Um, but he seemed to be... Uh, very happy. Like, it was just very joyous expression talking about the Ghostbusters movies. Like, his eyes lit up like he was a little kid talking about it. Like, the new movie, Afterlife. And that movie is going to completely bust whatever left of Eternal's theatrical run. Like, they had until Ghostbusters came out to do anything. If Disney was smart, they would move it to Disney Plus, and that's how they'll make back some of their money, because Ghostbusters is going to kill it. Ghostbusters is going to be one of the biggest movies of the year. All because basically they adapted the um, the extreme Ghostbusters thing. Girl and, uh, girl and guy Ghostbusters. The only thing missing was a Ghostbuster in a wheelchair, I think. Which, um, I, I don't remember his name. But uh, the 90s extreme Ghostbusters basically carried on the torch of the original Ghostbusters. And the original Ghostbusters literally passed the torch to them. Which is basically going to happen in this movie. The living Ghostbusters are going to appear as themselves, as Ghostbusters, fighting the big bad, and then they're going to retire completely, knowing that the world is in good hands with these kids. And maybe, like, one or two of them will stay on as, like, a mentor role, or maybe help with franchising the Ghostbusters, but it, it's essentially a passing of the torch movie, which is going to make um, Ghostbuster fans of the 80s and 90s pretty happy. And that's going to be enough for Sony to have an amazing year. Because Sony's releasing the Ghostbusters movie. And then the following month is the Spider-Man movie. Which is just going to crush everybody. I w if Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire really are in this movie. We could be looking at Endgame or um, Infinity Numbers. I would be shocked if the movie didn't make $2 billion. I really would. Because this is something that audiences have wanted for a very long time. To have all the Spider-Man in one movie and like a crossover ever since Spider-Verse. I would be very surprised um, if they don't make like either 1.5 or 2 billion. Because uh, one of the Spider-Man 
I think at least two of uh, Toby or not Toby's Tom Holland Spider-Man movies made uh, like a billion or something like that. So if you had all three Spider-Man actors, even if they're not in the movie very long, that would be monumental. People would see that just like people stayed to see essentially what they thought the finale of the MCU was. And that's why they saw Infinity War and they saw Endgame. And then they moved on. All right, guys, I need you to ready up so we can get to the next one. Um, please and thank you. Because I have uh, about a half hour left until um, Xenoblade. And Xenoblade's going to be pretty cool. It's going to be an epic finale. And then I have Forza stuff. <clears throat> but yeah, I would be shocked if um, if the Spider-Man movie doesn't do two billion. Because there have been Spidey movies that have done a billion. I think even one of um, Tobey Maguire's movies did really well. I don't remember how much Spider-Man two made. I'd have to check. But I'm pretty sure Spider-Man 2 did very well. <clears throat> Actually, you know what? I'm going to look that up. Did Spider-Man 2 make a billion? Or was it like five, uh, 800, 800 million? Something like that. Spider-Man 2 box office. Uh, two box office. Okay, Spider-Man 2 was 800 million. Spider-Man box office. Also 800 million. Spider-Man 3 box office. Spider-Man 3 was... So, all just shy of a billion. For the OG. I'm surprised that Spider-Man 2 only made 790 million. I mean, that's crazy. Amazing Spider-Man made 750 million. Amazing Spider-Man 2 was 700 million. Homecoming was 880 million. Spider-Verse was only 375 million. Ouch. Far From Home was 1 billion. And Captain America Civil War was one billion. Wow, really? Huh. I really thought one of Tobey Maguire's movies made a billion. I guess not. Crazy. And yet, Tom Holland's Spider-Man movies have all outperformed uh, Tobey's. Even though Spider-Man 2 is the superior Spider-Man movie. To anything that the other guys did. It just didn't make enough. Maybe enough people didn't go to the theaters or the prices of tickets weren't that expensive. Actually, no, they weren't that expensive back in 2002. Theater prices were way cheaper. You could see, like, for four people, you could see a movie for, like, $15. Like, if you went with a group of four, it cost you, for the entire group, around 15 bucks. Maybe. If you were on a date, um, when I took Amber to see Finding Nemo, it cost me $8 for two people. With concessions, it would have been $12. Now, if I take Amber to the theater, um, the tickets alone are going to cost me close to... I think they go for like $14 a piece. Something like that for two movie tickets. Like... Um, for one movie ticket, one adult. Um, if it's not a matinee, it's like $14. At least where I am. And before, um, when I was in high school, movie tickets were about, for adult, around four fifty, five, dollars Something like that. So technically, more people haven't gone to the movie theaters to make more money for Hollywood. Movie theaters have increased the price of the tickets. So it's not that more people than ever before are going to the movie theaters. They increase the price. Like every 10 years or something, movies get more and more expensive. 
when my dad went to go see the Batman movie, like Batman 89, like two people, like a date, him and my mom, it was like less than five bucks to, you know, with concessions probably would have been like seven dollars, you know? But nowadays, if I want to take Amber to the movie theaters, like to, to just see one movie that's not a matinee, after the concessions, like two things of popcorn, or no, one popcorn, one soda, and maybe two candies plus the tickets, I'm looking at close to 50 bucks. Close to it. That's insane. When we don't do concessions <clears throat> and we sneak in candy and drinks, it only costs us about like 30 bucks to see a movie. That's still expensive for a date. So yeah, they jacked up movie prices, at least in the East Coast. I don't know the rest of you guys, but that's pretty much how much it costs for two people to go see a movie. Between $25 and $30 for non-matinee. Non yeah, non-matinee prices. Oh, yeah. And when I took Amber uh, to see Finding Nemo, it's like afterwards I took her to a restaurant because I had money left over. Uh, it wasn't that expensive. Like, um, I remember paying, when I saw Spider-Man 2 by myself uh, in 2002 in my local theater, I saw it for around, like, less than $8. I didn't buy concessions though. It was like it was definitely I think it was like seven fifty or something like that. If I had would have had Amber and been dating her, which I, I wasn't dating anybody at the time, uh, would have been probably around for two people. I, w I would say Spider Man Two ticket would have been fourteen, probably fourteen dollars for two people, maybe less. I don't really remember completely. I do know that. Uh, when we saw the new Spider-Man movie, um, the, the, we saw the first one, Homecoming, and it was close to 30 bucks for two people. So, the only reason, uh, movies make more now is because inflation, basically. I'm surprised they, I don't know if they've jacked up the prices after the pandemic either, because I haven't been to the movie theater yet, so I can't tell you. I'd be curious, like, uh, when I go see the Spider-Man movie, because I am seeing the Spider-Man movie, especially if Tom Holland and Andrew Garfield is in there. Um, I'll just go on a day that's not super busy, so the theater's, you know, safer. Um, but I'm curious to see how much it would cost without concessions in our theater. I'm going to estimate probably around 29 34 something like that. But yeah, um, when movie prices go up, uh, overall you make more money because you can make up for less people not attending the movie if you are charging more for people to see the movie that are going. Uh, which, you know, I mean, that's just normal in business when, when things get harder people don't always necessarily lower their prices to make it easier for people because they have to make a profit. They increase the prices. Which is something people forget about economics is like inflation is never really a good thing. It's like when when things get less expensive, like say rent or, you know, uh, they do some other stuff. Companies always increase the price for basic necessities. Like the price for milk goes up, the price for food basic necessities you don't notice it because you feel like you're making more money but your basic needs are being the prices are going up and you don't notice it till you get older like just in the past I think it's like seven years milk has gone up uh, a couple times in price like a few 50 cents or 75 cents something like that uh, I used to be able to buy milk um, when I was 19, it would cost me 
like maybe two bucks for milk. I've seen milk go for as high as four seventy five. Just milk, just a not even a, a big, not even um, yeah, no for for just like one one gallon of milk, it's like around four something. But when Amber and I first got married, it was like two something. And lactate was four dollars. Lactate now is like six dollars, I think, something like that. So when the when the cost when when uh, certain prices go down, other prices go up. Nothing stays the same. So when people are like, "Oh, I'm making more money now. I can afford like this and that," it's like, nope. Companies are going to raise their prices because they have to. If they give people like raises or they like you know increase stuff. Then they have to jack up the prices for everything else to make up for it. It can't just be like, oh, okay, everybody makes the same amount now. It's like, nope, prices are going to go up. Always happens. It sucks, but that's just what the world does. I don't know why people forget that, though. Sometimes I forget it. I remember uh, I didn't yell at the store clerk, but I was just like, wait, how much is it for lactate now? Like... That's crazy. That can't be right. They're like, do you have a coupon? It's like, no, but I mean, I remember when this used to be this. It's like, well, this is the price now. It's like, oh. Well, that sucks. I guess I'll just get two things of milk then instead of three. It's like, I have this much on me. <laughs> you know? It's like, whoa! <clears throat> That's when I, I always get nervous sometimes when people, like, make these big arguments online for um, companies to change their prices for things to make it, quote, more affordable. Because it's like, then you don't know what they're going to raise, and then you won't even realize it. So it's like, they give you the illusion that you're actually making more money, when in reality you're not, because the prices have gone up everywhere else. It's true. They always do it. 100%. 100%. They give you a false sense of security that everything's okay, and then they just jack up the prices on everything else. Gas, milk, makeup if you're a girl, um, deodorant if you're a dude, shampoo costs, um, even pet stuff like cat food, cat litter. They'll raise the prices on that too. And there's nothing to stop them from doing it because, you know, they... They gave in, they increased the minimum wage to whatever, so I mean, they gotta make up for it somewhere else. Because companies have to, you know, be able to afford to hire people and stuff like that. They can't keep their rates the same if, um, you know, stuff goes up, or goes lower. Because they have, you know, they have a business to run. But at the same time, it's like, uh, was it really worth what just happened? It's like, uh, I don't know. I think I've seen, um... I might be wrong in this, but I'm pretty sure I have witnessed in my lifetime the minimum wage go up three times in my lifetime. I think. Which I thought, um, because the first time I was working uh, at a golf course and the minimum wage went up or whatever, I don't remember how much it went up. I think it went up like a uh, buck fifty or something like that. And then, like, not even within six months, like, the gas prices went up and all this other stuff. And I just, I, I was kind of, like, talking to my dad. I was like, uh, well, I make about this much money now, but for whatever reason, I don't have enough to buy this game that I've been saving for. Uh, something on the N64 or something on the GameCube. I don't remember what it was. But I just remember having this talk with him. And he was just like... Well, don't you know economics? I was like, what do you mean? He says, well, okay, you your generation wanted uh, the minimum wage raised, right? I was like, yeah. He says, cool. He says, that happened. Uh, you know, either Clinton or Bush did it. I don't remember who did. But he was like, now, he says, all the other prices are going to go up. I said, that's not fair. He says, that's life. I was like, well, that sucks. Um, I guess that's just part of being an adult. I don't know. Because prices can't stay the same. It'd be nice if they could, but they don't. And you can see evident of that. Like, movie theater prices went up. Gas, milk, deodorant, all that stuff. 
Game prices stayed relatively the same, though. Because cartridges used to be very expensive. NES games were like 70 bucks a pop in the 80s. Because, I mean, you know, it was really expensive to do the whole cartridge thing. And then, uh, around the time of the N64, prices went down uh, for N64 games. And the N64 was still pretty popular, but Nintendo offered their uh, player selects thing. So they'd still release some games that would be around 70 bucks, but they had games that were around 49 and 50. And then when the GameCube came out, they kept games like around 59, uh, 49.99. So video game prices stayed mostly the same. It was just other things that went up that most people wouldn't notice, I guess. I did because I eat a lot of cereal. So I noticed that milk prices went up and things like that. And I was like, whoa. Not cool. And I remember, I don't know, I was reading something in our local paper that uh, some people here were trying to uh, get the local town or whatever to, to increase stuff. Or the state to increase minimum wage or something here now. I don't remember. I think like $14, $16, something like that. And Amber and I were just like looking at each other like, oh my gosh, how much is milk going to be in two months from now? Like, we're already paying, because I'm, I'm lactose intolerant, so I'm paying, like, almost around six bucks for lactate, I think. So it's almost, for three things of lactate, it's almost 20 bucks. It's insane. What's cool about lactate over regular milk, though, is it lasts longer. Like, uh, because it's not, I mean, it doesn't have the lactose in it. <clears throat> but, yeah. It was expensive, now it's super expensive. But I have to drink it, otherwise I get super sick, you know? <clears throat> Alright, I think we can do one more. And then I gotta jump off and get ready for Xenoblade. Because I have the PS5 set up, so then I have to, you know... Not necessarily change the resolution. But I have to make sure that when I unplug the equipment, it doesn't always work. Sometimes Streamlabs like gets all messed up, so I gotta set up that, um, find Xenoblade, make sure that it doesn't need any updates, and then get ready for that. And I haven't played Xenoblade in a month, so that's probably gonna be a train wreck. And I think it's the finale, too. Which is gonna be bad. I vaguely remember how to play it. <clears throat> uh, uh. Come on, people. One more. Uno mas. I think that's correct. One more. One more. One more. One more. Boba Fett. Boba Fett. Do, 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 do. Everything in the 80s was 50 cents. Ah, dang. That's not fair. <laughs> uh, the only thing I remember about paying cents for is... Uh, I got... There was a Batman Tops trading card set in 1989. Not a set. A packet of baseball cards was 25 cents. In 1988. 89. And I don't know if they still do this, but um, movies, certain movies like Indiana Jones, Batman, and a couple other movies, uh, Staff of Kings, Batman, whatever, they had uh, special trading cards, like baseball cards. And um, there was a, a gas station near my house because I wasn't allowed to go to the theater to watch Batman 89. And... Um, I don't know why I really wanted them, but I begged my parents to get some Batman baseball cards, which I don't have them anymore, but they were real. And I remember um, going up to the, the guy who worked at the um, the gas station and you could see, you could get candy for like 25, 75 cents, depending on what type of candy it was. And then he had like the baseball cards, different baseball cards were different prices. And the, the Batman cards was around like 25, 50 cents, something like that. And, you know, it was pretty easy to get, uh, as a kid, to get uh, 25, 50 cents, 75, whatever. So, 
I just went in and I, I picked up one pack of cards and I remember feeling so proud of myself. I don't remember how I earned that money. I didn't have an allowance until I was like 10. So in 89, I would have been mm, probably seven. So it's not like I was really doing house chores or anything then. I don't believe so. But I still remember the, that feeling of paying for something and then getting it yourself. Uh, it was really cool. The baseball cards were lame, though. I mean, they, they weren't... They smelled funky. The gum that came with it was super stale. And, uh, yeah, they used to actually pack it once upon a time. I don't know if they still do it, but um, baseball cards had gum in the card. Not sanitary at all. It wasn't like in its own single wrapper. They would stick it in with the baseball cards. And me being a germ person, like, I don't... I would never do this today. Like, if somebody handed me Batman baseball cards and it had gum in it and the gum wasn't wrapped by itself, I wouldn't trust where that gum came from. But me being, like, a stupid seven-year-old, the fact that I got gum in my baseball cards was kind of like a bonus. And I just... Ate that thing right up. Didn't even think about it. It was like, gum! Uh, but now, like, you know, being kind of the hypochondriac I am, I'd be worried about, like, is this thing poisoned? How did this get up in here? You know, um, the, the anthrax scares and things that happened, like, post 9-11 really messed some of us up who are older because we don't trust certain things anymore because we went through that stuff. Like, they were, there was all kinds of bad stuff happening. Uh early 2000s that kind of messed up some people me especially I don't I don't even open mail I don't trust it because we had um uh, we had suspicious packages come to my house because my dad was uh, in the ministry and he was a, a very big public figure in the area of Massachusetts and we got a, a package that had somebody pranked us they, they put white powder uh, in the um, envelopes and uh, it scared the crap out of me. Um, and uh, I don't trust opening mail now because, you know, last time I remember opening mail was a couple of years ago. And I had gloves on to make sure there was no white powder or anything. That's messed up, you know. <clears throat> but that, that kind of stuff, that scare was going around uh, probably a couple of years. And then it kind of like worked its way out but you know the media was jumping all over it making it scarier than it was but that's that's kind of how I developed a fear phobia of um, opening mail I guess which is not not a normal thing that most people have I mean usually you had to have something traumatic happen involving mail so my mail just kind of piles up and then eventually I just throw it out because I, I can't touch it really Yep, the uh, the the A word scare uh, in the uh, the two thousands. We had a lot of crazy stuff happen in the early two thousands. Uh, when I was a kid in the eighties too, we still had um, we had Cold War drills, like to get under your desk for like a, a nuke. Which I don't see how going under your desk would really prevent you from being vaporized, but I mean we had those type of drills in school. The last time I remember having a drill like that would have been nineteen ninety. So from like um, the late 80s until about 1990, they were still, at least in the East Coast, we were doing um, those drills, like uh, evacuation things and get under your desk and you know, all of a sudden, because we were on the threat of war for, or at least whatever the Cold War was, I guess, looming threat that anything could happen any day, like, because it wasn't really, I guess there was kind of peace, but it wasn't. I don't think people had to live with that uh, anymore, but we still, in the 80s, they still had that. Especially in New York. And that's where I was, for a lot of my early, early years, I was in uh, New York until I was like nine, eight or nine. And then we went to Michigan, they didn't really do that stuff anymore. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, we had it in my schools, Rebecca. The um, the private schools, like the Catholic schools, still did them. 
until at least like I want to say eighty nine ninety. I remember I got in trouble once and I got the ruler because I I didn't want to do it because I didn't think it would ever happen. So uh, the nuns weren't thrilled. <laughs> so out came the ruler. Whack. <laughs> <coughs> I don't, uh, I, I don't understand how nuns were allowed to do that stuff. Are they still allowed to use a ruler on people? Like, if you misbehave, you get whacked? Like, I don't, I don't know what private Catholic schools are like now. But I, I remember I didn't want to go, when I had the choice of going to high school or go to a Catholic school, I didn't want to go to a Catholic school. I told my dad, I will risk public school. I am never going to a Catholic school again, because I, I was in preschool, and I was in first grade in Catholic schools. <clears throat> but yeah, um, I got in trouble for my sass. And I thought a lot of the stuff was stupid. I do remember, like, everybody cheering. Um, we saw something on television, or they were talking about, you know, when the Berlin Wall fell down. And, like, everything changed. It's, like, almost like nothing ever, you know, everything was good. It was, like, a whole new world, basically. Because people weren't worried about stuff. And then not long after the Berlin Wall went down, then we went into Desert Storm. It was like, what? What? Why? But I didn't know any of that stuff when I was a kid. I just, you know, went to school. Came home, played video games, whatever. It was weird. But I know I was always in trouble with the nuns. I don't know, I think it was my personality. I was a sassy kid. I didn't want to do something, I didn't do it. Then whack! Also, I did give lip. Like, you know. Or as my grandfather called it, sarcastic whip. Uh, my grandpa thought it was funny, but I don't know. I'm kind of surprised I didn't get traumatized by nuns. I was traumatized by clowns, not nuns. And the clowns is my grandpa's fault because he had a room full of clowns. Clown memorabilia in the uh, guest room where people would sleep because he just liked to troll people. It was funny to him. <laughs> if you came, if you came to, uh, you know, visit my grandpa... And, uh, you stayed in the guest room. It was full of clowns. And those things look freaky at night. And there's clown paintings, clown statues. There's just all these eyes staring at you. Ooh. I never understood why. It was like, what? what is the... Why this? He says, it's funny. It's like, how is this funny? He says, clowns are funny. The clowns are terrifying! How are clowns funny? No. Uh, my gosh. Boink! Oh, I missed it. How are we doing on time, by the way? Uh, we're just gonna make it. So, if my team wants to kick butt and take names, go for it. Whee! Ugh. But I like the Joker. Yeah, I like the Joker as a villain. Clowns are evil, so I think Joker's cool as a villain, but I still don't like the idea of clowns are scary. And I can understand, I, I get why the Joker is scary. You know, it resonates or whatever. On like probably more of a personal level. <laughs> Of why the Joker is terrifying. Um, but in terms of like just day to day clown stuff, no, I don't like I don't like clowns. It's, my my grandpa ruined clowns for me. Uh, and I didn't realize there was a problem with clowns until like I didn't know I had a fear of them until apparently I don't know if this is true or not. But my mom and my dad took me to like a, a circus near New York 
Like, and uh, a clown came up to me with a balloon and I started bawling. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think... I think um, <clears throat> my grandpa might have gone too far with the, the clown room and some other stuff. Because when, when this guy came up and he was like, hoo, 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 and he gave me a balloon, I was just like, ah! you know, so it was deep seated trauma. Um, I don't remember it. I mean, I was too little, but apparently, yeah, they said when the, the clown came by, I was the only kid that cried and kind of ran away from the clown. So, <laughs> I took my little legs and I ran. Uh, I don't know how old I was, though. No idea. But I did not go to McDonald's much as a kid. I went to Burger King. Clowns are universally creepy. Yep. Uh... That laugh was funny. I don't know. That laugh was creepy. Creepy clown laugh. <laughs> well, I'm going to steal your soul with a balloon. Here you go. That's what it sounded like. Probably. Ugh. Uh, da, 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 Bang. Boink. Boink. Almost winning. Good. Keep going, team. We're almost there. And then the Gene Showcase is done. In the bag. Cha-ching. So how many saw Jean Grey coming in this game? Like, did you think they were going to add her or they were going to be done with Marvel characters? Okay, wait. Let me put it another way. Did you think Spider-Man would release before Jean? Because I thought Spider-Man was going to be the next character to be added into Fortnite. For Marvel. I thought after people got Carnage, there would be um, Spider-Man. For Halloween, your friend was the Joker and you were Batman. Nice job, team. Good job. Good job. Good job. All right, so we got some... No, we barely have any time to set up. Stage 4 coming soon. Stage 4, the exclusive Crew Legacy set, unlocks on November 14 at 7 p.m. I don't even know what that is. I don't care. Ooh, that's a cool-looking character. All right, people. That is it for the Jean Grey showcase. I mean, Phoenix. There she is in all her glory. Uh, character model looks cool. Very accurate suit to the uh, Phoenix Saga. Dark Phoenix. Even the eyes are accurate because her eyes would be all like, you know, soulless because she's possessed, basically. And uh, next up, you're going to be redirected if you want to see Xenoblade. And then I'll be back doing Forza uh, uh, later tonight. I just have to get me some more brisk iced tea. Uh, I don't know why it's saying that the next stream is Animal Crossing, though. That's weird. It needs to be... Um... There we go. Okay, that should be redirected. Uh, so there's a problem with the uh, notification system today. Uh, so just make sure you guys, if you haven't already, head up uh, kwingsletsplays.com. And sign up for the free newsletter. And that way you'll be notified every single day. Uh, by me personally. About what's going on. And I will see you guys in a little bit. Uh, with. Um, what's it's face? Xenoblade. Xenoblade will be starting up at. Probably before 10.30. Because I have a feeling that it's going to be long. So I'm shooting for 10.15, 10.20. So just, you know, be re redirected over if you want to watch a, a cool anime. I, I mean, um, a cool RPG story. And uh, some amazing cutscenes. And it's a really fun game. Uh, I don't talk much in that series, though, because there's a lot of dialogue. So. And then if you want to chill with me later, I'll be playing Forza. Which I'm going to be uh, driving around the Jurassic Park Jeep tonight. Which I'm excited about, because, you know, nostalgia. <laughs> 
All right, check out Gene Gray out now. Uh, 1,500 uh, Fortnite points, whatever it's called, in the uh, shop for a limited time. And uh, I will see you guys next time with the Naruto Showcase, where we'll be talking about Naruto and how I got introduced to Naruto. And uh, how fun it was to watch it on my tiny laptop in Japanese. So, all right, later, peeps. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye. Whoops. Whoops. Whoops.